We're looking at chemistry 1128. This is the eighth pace. When we finish this, we'll be two thirds of the way done with this course. Eight out of 12, good job, you're making it. And um, this lesson here, I just, I'm gonna introduce some concepts that are covered on the first 12 pages, okay, of your reading material. It'll actually get us all the way through the first checkup and an introduction to the next section. Just some concept things, some terms. And then we'll do a video with some of the math, because I think that's where uh, most students have the most difficulty. But this particular chemistry pace, as in this whole course, and maybe you'll agree with me on this, they throw terminology at us that um, it's like, wow, what does that mean? <clears throat> One term after another, after another, after another, and then they're using a term that's brand new to define another term that's brand new. And even, even myself, as an experienced chemistry teacher, I'm reading the pace and I'm reading it over and over and saying, okay, now, what are they saying? <laughs> Why did they word it that way? Why are they using that terminology? I don't know. To me, it sounds a little confusing. So if you feel that way too, you're not alone, but we're here to help you. And in fact, I'm in my blue jeans because today is Saturday. For me, recording this, it's January the 2nd, 2021, and I'm giving up my Saturday for you because I want to get these videos made. And I've been sitting around too much during my Christmas break. I uh, need to get up and move in and do something. And this was one of my goals, keep making these videos and we're Almost two thirds of the way through. All right, enough about me. Let's talk about some of the chemistry terms here. They talk about a term called state function. And so what, what does that mean? It has nothing to do with states as in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Wisconsin. No, it has nothing to do with that. Maybe you think of a function as something from math class. If you've taken algebra one, algebra two, you've heard of functions. Again, it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> So they're using two words that we think we have an idea what they mean, and they come up with a totally different meaning when they put the two terms together. So a state function basically just means it doesn't matter how you get there, there's something true about that destination. In another chemistry book that I use, it um, explains a state function or illustrates a state function this way. It says if you were going to go to, let's say, you know, Six Flags over America, a um, amusement park, it doesn't matter whether you walk there, whether you flew there, whether you drove a couple days on the road to get there, or whether a helicopter dropped you in there, it doesn't matter how you got there. Once you're there, you're there. And once you're there, you'll have the same amount of fun. You'll enjoy the rides the same. You'll have the same, you'll eat the same things. You'll have the same fun. So fun at the amusement park is not dependent on, it's not a function of, it does not depend on how you got there. It's just the fact that you're there. So they're going to apply this idea to, you know, let's say carbon dioxide. And it doesn't matter whether carbon dioxide was formed you know, through a long process of a series of reactions or whether it's a byproduct of another. The fact that we have carbon bonded with two oxygens means that there's a certain amount of energy in that bond, okay? Um, speaking of bonds, let's talk about bonds for a second here, okay? Now, carbon dioxide actually has two double bonds, you remember that? <clears throat> Whenever a compound is going to, in a reaction, break apart and then recombine to form some new compounds on the other side of the reaction, the, re the products, there is energy that's being stored in these bonds. Now my little pea brain, for some reason, I think of that as if these little bonds are either battery packs or little sticks of dynamite, you know, however you want to think about it. But there's, it's stored energy. But when this molecule gets broken apart to form the individual atoms, boom, energy is released, okay? Now, once it's released, then, and you have all these individual atoms, they recombine on the product side and form new compounds, okay? Now, when they come back together, 
in a new arrangement, they'll have bonds between those atoms. So some of that energy that was released kind of gets like bottled back up <laughs> into those bonds, into those batteries, you know, so to speak. But it's not going to be exactly the same. So some of the bonds that are broken, some of that energy goes into the bonds of the products, but some of that energy is released, okay? It's free energy. And so the reaction takes place and there's, inner, there's a, should we say, a net energy that's given off. Some reactions, in order to happen, there actually has to be more energy added to it, okay? So there's energy added to break the bonds, but then more energy is added so that, the, so that the product bonds have more energy than what you started with, with the bonds. So energy has to be added. It's almost like... Anyways, <clears throat> when that happens, it's called endothermic. If we have to add energy, see the positive, we're adding energy to it in order to get the reaction to take place. Okay? In an exothermic reaction, more energy is given off the, between the bonds from the, the original products, I mean reactants, and the bonds in the products. There's a, there's a net effect of energy, and that energy would be in the form of heat given off. All right, let me give you an example of an exothermic reaction. You take um, a log and you put it on a fire. That's a chemical reaction taking place, okay? There's carbon in, in the wood, and there's oxygen in the air, Okay, and in fact, if I can not trip over myself here, let's say we have carbon plus oxygen. I can guarantee you, since this is combustion, this is a fire, something taking, um, <clears throat> something burning, there's always, always, always going to be two products. Now, your pace doesn't tell you this, okay? It talks about combustion, but I'm going to let you know on a secret. Every time there's combustion, the two products are carbon dioxide and H2O. Okay, so I guess actually this can't just be carbon. This would have to be, um, let's say C, let's say it's methane, CH4, whatever. All right, and I didn't balance this equation, but the point is <clears throat> this is combustion. So these products are formed, but there also will be heat, okay? Thermal energy, heat given off. And you know that from burning wood, there's heat given off that can literally be measured. That's the cool thing about physics and chemistry is everything can be measured. So they know exactly how much energy is in all of these bonds and therefore we can predict exactly how much energy is given off. Now we call this delta H because it's the change in heat. By the way, another word for heat is enthalpy. See, isn't it cool? They have so many new words that they're introducing here. Enthalpy. Enthalpy. So the change in heat is the enthalpy of the reaction. If the enthalpy is negative, negative means it's given off. It's being released. Okay? That's exothermic reaction. So think of like a fire giving off heat, but even just like adding um, an acid and a base. If you add them together in a reaction and put your hand on the container or put a thermometer in, you'll actually feel that that container is getting hotter, okay? It's exothermic reaction. Now, one more thing I just want to touch on as we talk about these terms, and that is the term entropy. When you start talking about the second law of thermodynamics, it makes the point that in the universe, <clears throat> entropy is always increasing. It's a weird word, okay? It sounds similar to enthalpy. It has nothing to do with enthalpy. Entropy is a measure of how much disorder something has, okay? So maybe you made a New Year's resolution to clean your bedroom, and so you put a lot of energy into it, but you reduce the chaos. But as the month carries on, things pile up in the room, and the chaos of your bedroom increases, we would literally say the entropy of your bedroom has increased. And in nature, it's expected. That's what the second law of thermodynamics says. We expect things are always going to become more chaotic, not more organized. So when a reaction takes place, 
if it results in more entropy, more chaos, it's more likely to occur than organi organization. That's, that's just a broad brush definition, okay? But keep that in mind as you read about these terms, and I hope that'll help you, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about some of the math involved in one of your problems coming up.